Hey guys, it's Core Ross and Weapon 6 News. So we have big news today and it is about DDoSing. The developers are actually going to be taking legal action against the worst offenders here and also they're going to let us know how they plan to fix it. Now, this has of course been a big issue with the new season, but it's been an ongoing issue for at least maybe the last two seasons or so. Now, let's just go over some of the terms first. So DDoS is distributed denial of service attack. Lots of IPs hitting the server at the one time, either overloading its connection or bringing it down potentially, or just degrading its performance. Now a DOS attack is actually from a single IP. Now modern connections and internet is getting to the point where you can do this successfully from one IP address. You just have to send enough information. So first up is ban waves. They're gonna be doing a ban waves on people they've identified as being the culprits of these DDoS attacks. Now, these ones, of course, come from multiple IPs, which makes it very hard to track down. However, these ones, these are the idiots, because what they're doing is they're actually doing it from their own connection, their own IP, which, of course, makes them traceable. So that is uh, dumb. Now, these ban waves have identified the worst offenders perpetrating DDoS attacks, and they will be initiating ban waves this will apply to both PC and console players. They plan to do this next week and they will continue as needed, which is very good. This uh, should have a small impact on the DDoS attacks, as of course the worst ones are out there, but there'll still be a lot of other ones. Now, this is interesting. This actually here shows that these people that are getting banned are <laughs> the dumbest ones. They have to be doing it from their own connection because they actually tell us that for each server, three matches are played on that one server. As such, that means there's three full games going on at one time. So if people are DDoSing, it's gonna be very hard to figure out who's who. Now, of course, you could probably get an idea of which team it is, you know, which, you know, they'll be in the servers with the DDoS attacks routinely, but figuring out exactly which person to ban is certainly, uh, interesting that's why i think this ban wave is going to be hitting the dos attackers the guys who are actually using their own connection rather than these ones because this is you know from multiple ips so yeah but anyway that, what they say here is that the servers host three matches per server that is going to change it will now be one server doing one game now of course that might impact uh, search times and stuff like that maybe it depends if they have enough servers to fill everything up because you're basically you know, going up and tripling the amount of servers you're going to need to host all those games. So that might be an issue, but they don't say anything about that there, so it might not be a problem at all. Of course, it's all uh, hosted by Microsoft Azure, who have huge data centers, so they easily have the scalability, so that shouldn't be an issue, hopefully. And it's also very important, because if you got DDoS in a game, it doesn't mean the enemy team done it. You might be winning, but it doesn't mean that the server was taken down by that enemy team. It could have been in two other games the DDoSers were in. So if you got hit and you were thinking it was our team, it may not have been. Now, this should see a 66% reduction in the amount of attacks because, uh, of course, it's going to be reducing the amount of servers that are close to multiple games. So that should make a big difference. And this is going to be done at the end of the week. But of course they do expect DDoSing to still occur. So what they're gonna do is remove the escalate and abandon sanction. So if you abandon the games, you get a worse and worse penalty the more you abandon. This is not going to be the case and this is targeted for the end of the week. So that'll just, you know, if you can't get back into your game and the game ends and you get a sanction, you will not get worse and worse penalties for it. Now they also say here that they're gonna do some network traffic monitoring and management. Now, this means, I think basically, they're going to be watching what comes in and out of the server, and they're also going to be uh, kind of filtering out what they don't think should be coming into the servers so that they can kind of reduce the amount of impact these kind of attacks will have. Now, there's definitely no perfect way to do that because even just you know filtering out the package you don't want to accept, you're still going to have to process them. So there could be still issues with that, but it will make it far harder, especially for these guys here. But the dozen ones might be more of an impact, but certainly overall, it will definitely help. But it's scheduled for early October, so that's maybe two to three weeks until we actually see that come into the actual servers. Now, the other one is the legal options. Holy crap. So they've been talking to their legal team to see what they can do. 
and they are actually right now in process of taking legal action against prominent DDoSers. So, you know, a lot of people have been saying, I said in my video, uh, I think Get Flat said it in his video, it be on all kinds of places, that DDoSing is illegal. You can get fines, you can get, uh, I think one of the worst punishments is not being allowed to use the internet at all. So, yeah, that would suck. That would really suck. And they hope this impact is going to reduce the availability of DDoS service providers. Now, I expect that most of them are like in Russia and stuff like that. So probably not exactly going to be an easy thing to target legally when it comes to the actual hosts of the DDoS uh, servers. Uh, and also a lot of the IPs and stuff could be uh, PCs that have been hijacked and stuff like that. So it's definitely not a great thing to impact, but it will have some impact. So at least that's something. Now they're going to work with their Microsoft partners. Now, if you don't already know, Microsoft Azure actually hosts all the servers for Rainbow Six Siege. That's for Sony's PlayStation, the Xbox, and PC. They are all run on Microsoft Azure data centers. And Microsoft Azure is the enterprise side of Microsoft. Very profitable. And it works the same as Amazon. Amazon actually hosts game servers as well because, again, they have an enterprise side of business. And, again, they make a ton of money off it. So they are all have these massive data centers that people like Ubisoft and EA and stuff like that can utilize. So they're going to be working with Microsoft to try and develop some solutions. And of course, um, this will have an effect at some point, but who knows um, what it'll be. And it'll be an ongoing thing. And of course, they're not exactly going to share what they develop. They're just going to keep that nice and quiet. So yeah, and uh, they have a list of terms down here, which is really good. So we've got the DDoS, which is an attack on a server or network from multiple PCs or devices that overload the network. This results in all players getting disconnected. And a DOS attack is an attack on a server or network from a single PC device that overloads the connection. This sometimes results in all players being disconnected. And this is the choice of attack by the complete numpties who are completely giving away their IP. Then we've got soft booting. Then we've got soft booting, which is an attack that degrades the network servers to the point that some players are dropped from the match. Then we have stressing, which is a DDoS attack that degrades the network servers to a lesser degree than soft booting. This results in all players maintaining their connection but having a constant ping, making the game unresponsive. Now this is very interesting because the fact that three games are played per server might be why we've seen a lot more impact on consoles than we have on PC because the console player base is far larger than PC. So it's much more likely that three of the games played on a server would all be console games with potentially maybe only one PC game every so often actually showing up on those servers, which would make it look like there's far more attacks on a console than on PC, where actually it might have been quite even throughout the entire player base. Uh, which is really interesting because I did think there was just more attacks on the consoles, but finding that out really opens up the possibility that that may not actually be the case. And of course, it's great that they're taking legal action as well. Of course, this is huge news right now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and uh, I'm sure this will develop over time, and we will see yet more developments. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.